One thing before this video continues is I want to apologize for all the, the noise you might hear in this video. Some people are just so entitled. They want to sit and work and manufacture beautiful works of art while we're filming. So sorry, guys. Hey, guys, it's Boo from Mile High Distilling. And today we are going to follow a trend. We had a, a pretty successful video. You guys seem really receptive with a video we did recently, Reflux versus Pot Stills. And we figured let's keep on going with some of these versus head to head um, style videos. So today we're going to be talking about another pretty big topic in the distilling community. That is bubble plates versus downcomer plates. So we're going to be talking about the differences between those plates. But just so you get an idea, here's a four inch bubble plate. And right here, we have a four inch downcomer plate. So these plates are doing the exact same thing, just in a different sort of style. What they're doing is each one of these plates is gonna simulate a fully packed column. So a lot of distillers will stack multiples of these. I've seen up to like 32 all in a row and each, you know, that's 32 times the amount of reflux you can, you can expect out of a standard reflux column. So you're coming ultra pure with this. Not only that, but I see a lot of distillers that will use just one plate and that's just to like clean up their rums, whiskeys and not lose a whole bunch of flavor. Just, you know, get rid of some of those impurities. So they're practical mainly in reflux environments, but you know, throw one in, clean something up, in a, in a pot still too. And that's one thing we can look at too is like, as you guys see here, you can fit these just about anywhere. Most common way is in sections, our flute sections for our pseudo commercial stills. But right here I have it in just a regular pipe, an extension. Right here it's in a sight glass. Right here it's in a actual reflux section. And you can even just put it on top of your lid. So these can go in, in really just any, any way you want as long as it'll fit. Now you do want to get it in the very beginning of your run as things are coming up. You don't want it past the condenser. You want it pretty much right as that boil hits. You're gonna want these plates in. So keep that in mind. Let's start with explaining how these are working. So the downcomer, this is gonna sit in a section. And as you guys know, vapors rise up. As those vapors are rising up, each of these plates have a ton of little holes here. And basically this acts sort of like a dam in a way. Only the lightest, which is the most pure vapors, can squeeze through those holes. The less pure, denser vapors aren't able to pass through and it's basically forcing them back down so they can be put back in the boiler and they'll reboil again as lighter vapors. That's essentially what's happening here. And then you're gonna have this downcomer, the actual stem of the downcomer, and it's gonna flood with all those low wines. It's gonna fill up and it's just gonna evenly drop, kind of like an umbrella turned upside down, just gonna kind of flow out there. And that's mainly just for, you know, it does, you don't really need this part, it's just more for that even flow. You're gonna crisscross these, so you know, one section's gonna have it up front of the glass, sort of like that, and then one the next section will have it on the back. So they kind of beeline in a way. That'll just give you the right flow. Now, bubble plates are doing almost the exact same thing. I don't know if this camera can see it. Devin will tell me if not, but we have tiny slits in between each of these caps. And what'll happen is as these plates sits in here, vapors come up, they're gonna go through these tiny slits and they're going to do the exact same thing. Those, those lighter vapors are able to push through to the other side, heavier vapors aren't, fall back down. So exactly the same way. Um, but that's where we start running into the differences between these plates. So whereas on a downcomer, these are all open perforated holes. You don't have any control of the amount of those vapors pushing through. Everything's pushing through and everything's going back down that needs to. With the bubble plates, you're gonna see that if you take a really simple, just a regular Allen wrench, you can loosen a plate up.
and put it on the other side. So this allows you essentially to control the amount of reflux in your still. You can do all plates on one side. You'll face them downwards to have reflux active. That'll make it so this is like 100% reflux mode. Or take three of these plates, do what I just did, move them to the other side, you'd have 50% reflux, kind of like that. So these are great. That is probably the biggest difference between these plates, is you can control the amount of reflux going through this, whereas the downcomer, you can. It's all or nothing. So with that said, these are going to run a little faster since everything's pushing through here. These are running a little bit slower, and these are also a little more costly, less expensive. Those are your, your key differences. It's not much. It's marginal. What I'd recommend is if you're thinking about buying a flute or something like it, and you want, you're not really sure which plate route you want to go, give us a call up. Talk to us. We can do a half-half mix if you want to test yourself on your side. We can do three downcomers, three bubble plates, whatever you want. And you can really see if you're noticing a difference between those plates and what they're doing. Um, or get a set of each and run one run downcomer, one run bubble plate. But we're going to be explaining a little bit of the differences without running today. And we'll see if we can sort of uh, help you along in your decision making process between the plates. Now another difference we have is the type of gasket for each plate. So you'll see, as that bubble plate sits in this section, we're like right on this rib of the flange. So if I try to put a regular gasket with a lip on both the outer and inner side with the bubble plate, I don't know how well we can see this, but it's going right over that. So. You'll see this silicone gasket, regular type, sits right over that flange all the way. There's really no room for anything else to sit in there. And that makes the bubble plate not, not effective, really. You could probably get it to clamp down. I wouldn't recommend it. You'll probably leak. So when you have a bubble plate, you get a gasket like this with just a lip on the outer. That allows that to sit in that bubble plate and go across that flange evenly. So a great selling point for these is vodka distillers. People looking for some high proof spirit and they're trying to get up to that 190. That's called an azeotropic level of spirit. It's pretty hard to hit. Um, these plates are gonna help with that. So the more plates you have, the more probability you have of staying at 190. You can, you can always get there if you run slow enough but staying there is a problem. So if you're having trouble with that, get a sight glass, get an extension, get what you want, put a plate in there and see if you're noticing that increase. You can always add. So in these formats, in a lot of, a lot of different formats, you won't really be able to see the plates running. I mean, you can't really see through stainless unless you're like Superman. Now you can a little bit in this glass, or in a flute section, you have to remember when you're distilling, all those hot vapors are coming up, this thing will eventually fog up. You won't be able to say an awful lot. So when they're running, you can go out sound. They do make, you know, sort of like a water frothing over, sort of like that. It's something you just have to experience and you'll get what I mean. But you're gonna be going off that indication. And what a lot of the times I see is these are gonna go pretty more, a lot more aggressive. I mean, we're talking some, some big caps as opposed to these small holes. So they're making a lot more noise. And you know, that's, that's one thing. That's a good sign. You want those plates to kind of jank around in there. You wanna hear them. You wanna hear them bubbling, going. All right, so we set up a little couple sections for you guys. Got a bubble plate in this one down here and a downcomer plate in this one up here. Um, so you can kind of see just how that's going to look. I have the glass on this taken out, which obviously do not do that at home. That's stupid. But with the glass, all you see is this. So it's hard to show you guys the bubbling action with the glass there. So that's why I have it out. But I'm using heat proof gloves and I'm being smart about it. So 
don't do this at home. <laughs> but this is just to show you what it kind of looks like. Like, look at all that bubbling action happening in there. Like, it's even, oh my God, it's starting to screen, steam up my lens. I get too close. But you can see it, and it's just going crazy. All right, so now we got the bubble plate on the bottom. As you can see, that's just bubbling away like crazy. Um, this is just water in the still, by the way, for all those at home. Um, so it's going to look a little different when you're doing it. Water and alcohol have different weights. So the bubbling might look a little different. This is just to show you guys what it might kind of be like. But that's the bubble plate right there. I can't get super close because it's going to start steaming up my lens, and hot steam is very painful. So I'm not going to get too close to that. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm going to try putting up my mic to try to, you know, show you guys what this sounds like in there when it's bubbling away. All right. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that's sort of what it generally would sound like. And look at that, just going crazy in there. As a rehash, one more time, what you can typically expect out of these plates is with a bubble plate, we have complete, utter control over the reflux, whereas a downcomer would just be all or none. We're also talking about a price difference here. These are relatively more expensive. And again, you're going to be a little bit faster with this because it's doing everything all at once. Whereas these just take a little more time to process through these, these slits. And you know, just depending on the amount of reflux you're going with, you'll be capping a lot more off. Vapor travels slower. You know, you're gonna slow down a little bit. It's, um, it's pretty minimal. I, I really do believe that. You have people dead set on these and people dead set on these, and that's fine if they're dead set, but how I take an approach to almost everything distilling is I keep an open mind, and I'd really recommend if you have the resources to do this or, or you have the inquisitive, uh, inquisitiveness to do this, is you grab both of these types of plates and you play around and do a side-by-side -side test. Run one, run two, each with a different plate, and take run one and run two, sip them side by side, and, and let me know if, if you're noticing a difference in the harshness, the purity, I mean anything. Um, I'd be really curious. Comment down below if you get to that, that stage. And um, yeah, for the most part, just um, experiment and have fun. And I hope this at least helped you to um, discover something new about the plates, something you, you weren't sure of. And um, happy distilling, guys. Thank you for watching.